Okay, everyone, let's start in a comfortable seat. In the past few days, we've been reviewing the yamas, which is the first limb or stage of the eight limbs of yoga. And we've gone through ahimsa, which means non-harm, non-violence, satya, which means truthfulness, asteya, non-stealing, brahmakarya, right use of energy. And today we're going over a parigraha. I found this wonderful article on the Art of Living website. It's called The Fifth Yama, a parigraha. Five ways it can ignite lasting non-attachment, freedom, and unconditional love in you. It's written by Sejal Shah. So she takes apart a parigraha, the Sanskrit word, and divides it into its meanings. Graha means to reach for, accept, seek, or crave. Pari means from all sides. And ah, right at the beginning, means non or the opposite of. So parigraha is not taking more is needed, practicing non-possessiveness and non-accumulation, all of which when practiced together can help in developing an attitude of detachment or non-dependence, trust and self-reliance. Here's a great quote by Gurudev Sri Sri Ravi Shankar. Non-accumulating simply means confidence in one's existence and in one's abilities. It is knowledge of oneself. This one's by Lao Tzu. When I let go of what I am, I become what I might be. When I let go of who I am, I receive what I need. And this one is from the famous book, Light on Yoga by BKS Iyengar, one of the fathers of modern yoga. The yogi feels that the collection or hoarding of things implies a lack of faith in God, divine, universal intelligence, however you label, and in himself to provide for the future. By the observance of a parigraha, the yogi makes his life as simple as possible and trains his mind not to feel the loss or the lack of anything. Then everything he really needs will come to him by itself at the proper time. And this one's by the poet Henry David. It is preoccupation with possessions more than is from Lili. And this last quote is by Lao Tzu again on impermanence. The idea that we realize everything is constantly changing. If you realize that all things change, there is nothing you will try to hold on to. And then the article ended with some ways of incorporating a parigraha or non-attachment into daily life. One is to downsize, declutter, and practice minimalism. Two is to share what you have with gratitude, giving from a sense of acknowledging abundance that you have. And three, this one can be a challenging one, forgive. Forgive and let go. As we know that when we hold resentment or grudge, we're really imprisoning ourselves first and foremost. And then another one is prioritize self-care. When we give ourselves the care that we need physically, mentally, spiritually, then we have that sense of fullness to not need to grasp, cling, possess, covet what we think we don't have. So I invite you in this physical asana yoga practice as we do with whatever themes of philosophy that we're exploring to reflect on ways that you can see what you might be attached to. We all have attachments. It's a human thing. Perhaps you're attached to fear or insecurity and tend to hold back in a physical pose or hold the breath as we know that fear can do. Or is there an attachment to a feeling of success or an outcome of I must feel good through this? Knowing that all of those, while our intentions might be good, can actually 
bring us to a feeling of lack, not being able to experience the fullness that the moment brings. It brings me back to that Yoga Sutra quote, the mind is the ground for both bondage and liberation. So let's come into the practice, sitting tall. Allow your sitting bones to root down towards the earth. Physical feeling of groundedness. And as you lengthen up through the center of your spine, let your chest broaden and let the shoulders soften slightly behind you and down as you lift up through the crown of your head. And maybe close the eyes, feel the weight of your hands resting on your lap. And take a pause to just observe what is before changing anything else around. What is in the quality of your breathing? What is in the state of your mind and being? And in our practice of seeing more clearly what we might be attached to, let's be kind to ourselves. Coming back to the intention beneath it is to free ourselves of attachments that can inhibit our greatest well-being, our full perspective. Notice if there's any inhibition in the breath. As you start to clear that out through the mouth, invite deeper inhalations. <sighs> Filling up the lungs, the belly, feel a taller posture. And exhaling through the mouth, with a gentle whisper, as if you're fogging a mirror. Feel both ends of the breath, the very top of the inhalation, that feeling of fullness, ready to let go of it as you allow the feeling of emptiness at the very bottom of the exhalation. Celebrating impermanence in the breath, as it comes and goes. And now closing the lips, invite more breath into the belly where you feel the muscles there, the diaphragm at use, expanding the belly. Then gently hollowing the belly as you breathe out through the nose. Now equal in and out breath. Now you could continue as you whisper the breath at the back of your throat with ujjayi pranayama, if you wanna keep it a sustained slow breath or moving into energizing bellows breath, bastrika pranayama. We begin with the elbows bent to the sides, hands like this, and I'll quickly demonstrate if you're new to it. Inhale, we'll lift the arms, the fingers spread, and exhale, we'll bend the elbows and it's rhythmic all through the nose, eyes closed, using the diaphragm to breathe into the belly like this. So if you wanna give it a try, I'm gonna watch the clock for one minute. So let's prepare, bend the elbows apart, sit tall, relax the shoulders, breathing through the nose, ready, begin.
Relax and pause, breathe naturally. Just a moment to observe. And transition back to Ujjayi Pranayama, closing the lips and softly narrowing the back of your throat as you breathe evenly and sustain through your nose. Engaging the mind in a steady rhythm through the sound of your breath. So what do you choose to cultivate today and how you approach your physical practice? Qualities within yourself. Setting your sankalpa or intention as you seal your palms to meet at your heart and bow in. Tuning to the sound of your breathing, gently open your eyes and let's begin standing up at the top of your mat in mountain pose. Set your feet apart a little wider than hips distance to start and look down and spread your toes, lift them off the ground to activate the inner and outer arches of your feet as well as the front muscles of your thighs. Keep all of that activity and now spread the toes on the ground Parallel your second toes to each other, and then root down through the four corners of each foot. Feel the belly slightly engaged as you lift up through the crown of the head. Shoulders stay relaxed as you inhale to raise the arms overhead, catching hold of your left wrist with your right hand. Lift the sideways, and to your right, exhale to side bend, drawing the tailbone towards the ground between your heels. Inhale, rise up through center, switch hands, holding the right wrist. Lift the sideways and exhale, side bend to your left, firming down to your right foot. Inhale, lift back to center, bend the elbows apart like the shape of a cactus out of your arms and draw the shoulder blades down the back, right under the shoulder blades, arch the upper middle back to lift the chest in a back bend. Breathe in, lift the spine upright and seal the palms overhead. Breathe out, bend the knees gently and fold with the feeling of a flat back, engaging the belly, lengthening the spine. Press your fingertips on the ground ahead of your legs, and inhale, lift the chest as if pressing your heart through the gates of your arms. Lower the fingertips outside of your heels and step the left knee behind you into a kneeling lunge. Firm down to the right foot, and inhale, sweep the arms overhead, lifting your spine upright, firm through the legs. Catch the left wrist again and exhale side bend to the right, keeping the right knee and toes facing forward, right foot rooted. Inhale up through center again. Hook your thumbs like an eagle and exhale, coil your chest up, sliding the shoulder blades down, drawing the tailbone down and maybe slightly forward as you lift the heart. Inhale, raise the arms, palms meet, tracing your thumbs down to your heart. Exhale, place your hands flat on the ground, step to all fours in modified plank. Shoulders over wrists, breathe in. Then exhale, shift forward, keeping the belly engaged. Try to lower your chest and belly simultaneously as you hug the elbows close to your sides. Straighten the legs on the ground and inhale to a baby cobra. Drawing the shoulders behind you, pressing them down. Root down for your hands. Lift back to all fours and exhale, lift your hips to downward facing dog. Take a deep breath here, in and out to the nose, firming the fronts of your thigh bones back. On the next inhale, raise your left leg behind you, flexing the heel towards the rear wall of your room. As you exhale, bend your left knee towards your nose, rounding forward to plank. Lightly step left foot just inside of your left hand to a kneeling lunge. Root down to your front foot and inhale, raise the arms, lift the torso, catching hold of your right wrist. Exhale, side bend to the left, keeping your left leg stable and grounded. Inhale, rise up, switch the hook of your thumbs if you can remember which. Then exhale, coil your chest, lifting the heart, draw the tailbone down and slightly forward. Breathe in the spine, seal the palms to the heart. 
Exhale, lower the fingertips. Step to the top of your mat to fold. Inhale, sweep the arms to rise all the way up to stand in Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, join the hands together in Samastitihi, equal standing. Second side. Inhale, raise the arms overhead. This time, catch hold of your right wrist. As you exhale, side bend to your left. Feel your right foot get heavier. Inhale, rise up to center, switch, holding the left wrist. Exhale, side bend to your right. Feel the left foot heavier. Inhale, rise to center, cactus, the elbows to bend apart. And exhale, coil your chest up, drawing the tailbone down, not behind you. Inhale, raise the spine and arms, palms touch. Exhale, hinge forward into Uttanasana. Press the ground of your legs. Inhale, lift the chest and lengthen halfway up. Lower the fingertips outsides of your heels. Exhale the right knee back to a kneeling lunge. Root down to the left foot. Inhale, raise the arms and spine. Catching hold of your right wrist. Exhale, side bend to the left, anchoring down through the left foot. Inhale, lift the arms. Hook the thumbs like an eagle. And exhale, coil the chest up, drawing the tailbone down and slightly forward. Inhale, up to up again, palms meet, down to the heart. Step to your version of plank and use the entire exhale to lower forward, then down, either cobra or upward facing dog. Breathe in to coil your chest up. Breathe out to lift the pelvis back to downward facing dog. Once there, take a full cycle of breath through the nose. Long breath. Side two, inhale, raise your right leg behind you, flexing the heel towards the rear wall. Exhale, bend the knee towards your nose, rounding forward through plank. Lightly land the foot just inside of your right hand. Set the back knee down. Inhale, raise the arms and spine, catching hold of your left wrist. Exhale, side bend to your right. Inhale, upright again, hook the thumbs like an eagle. Exhale, coil your chest up as you draw the tailbone down. Inhale, rise up, join the hands in prayer. Exhale, the fingertips down to the top of the mat and step forward to fold. Inhale, sweep your arms, rising all the way up to stand, palms meet. This time, bow forward into sun salutation A. Flowing to the breath, inhale, rise halfway. Step or float back to Chaturanga as you exhale to lower. Breathe in to Cobra or Upward Facing Duck. Breathe out to Downward Facing Duck. Let's meet there for a few breaths. We're going to set the route for a new sequence that we'll flow through. But on this first time around, let's semi-flow setting it up. Begin with your feet hips distance apart and downward dog. Then inhale, raise the right leg behind you, keeping the hips square to start. As you exhale, come forward and cross the right knee to tap your left elbow or outer upper arm, stepping the foot just inside of your right hand. Come into a high lunge. Feet your hips width apart, parallel. Energize your legs as if you're dragging them towards each other but keep them still to feel support to rise up. Arms overhead and crescent lunge. Now let's pause a moment and feel the orientation of the bowl shape of your pelvis. You could bend your left knee, you could set it on the ground for more stability, but at least use the bend to anchor the tailbone downward and slightly lift your frontal hip bones by engaging your lower belly. Scissoring the right hip back, the left hip forward, evenly face both frontal hip bones at the front of your mat, and then feel stability here at your center, specifically right under your belly button. A sense of containing it rather than spilling it forward. Now keeping all of that, take a deep breath and keep your spine vertical, legs still. 
at your waistline, begin to rotate your rib cage to face the right wall while opening the arms wide apart like a T. Let's take a few breaths in this upright twist. Keep bending your right knee just above the heel. Rooting down through that right foot as we did in the previous flow is really important to anchor your balance. You could bend the left knee a bit more, especially if you find your torso leaning towards the front of your mat, no longer vertical. And you might even add the challenge of looking back at your right thumb if you wanna play with your balance further. Now draw the shoulder blades both down the back, lengthen up through the top of your head and take another deep breath. Think of a backwards cartwheel just with your arms. So the right arm reaches forward, the left arm backstrokes to land in warrior two to face the left wall. Now here, align your right heel to intersect the arch of your left foot. By slightly turning in your left leg, you can completely turn out the right leg as it was in the lunge already. Here, the right outer hip wraps under the body, tracking the front knee with the middle toe. Firm the top of your left thigh bone back and feel again the alignment of your pelvis upright, alignment of your spine upright, and then relax the shoulders, gaze past the right hand. Let's take two more breaths, feeling focused and grounded in warrior two. Now flipping the right palm to face up, lift slightly through the side waist, then side bend towards the rear of your mat, landing the left hand lightly on the left leg, the right arm sweeping overhead. Notice your right knee continues to bend in the same direction, not buckling into the left. Breathe into your right side body for one more breath. Feel a sense of containing your center, especially as you transition. On an inhale, lower your two hands to frame your right foot and step to plank. On an exhale, lower into your choice of vinyasa, whether it be cat-cow, regular, cobra, or upward dog. And at any moment you need to skip the vinyasa to take care of yourself, if that's what you need, feel free. Let's meet in downward facing dog. Now with feet hips width apart, keep your hips leveled and inhale, raise your left leg behind you. As you exhale, come forward, crossing left knee to right elbow or tricep in plank. Step the left foot inside of your left hand in a high lunge. Feet are hips width apart, parallel. Energetically, but not visibly, drag your feet towards each other to feel the stability to root down and rise up. Crescent lunge. Now again, you might bend the back knee. You might even lower it to add more support. Feel your tailbone lengthen downward as you slightly lift your frontal hip bones, scissoring the left hip slightly back, the right hip slightly forward. Containing your center, take a deep breath here. Keep the shoulders relaxed and at your waistline, twist to your left. Notice the leg stays still and it's the rib cage turning. Arms wide like a T, let's take a few breaths. Continue to bend your front knee just over the ankle. Feel the quadricep wrap the femur. Spine staying vertical. If not, bend the right knee some more to align the pelvis upright, affecting the spine. Relax the shoulders, maybe gaze towards the left thumb. Let's take one more full cycle of breath. These transitions challenge and develop strength and core stability. Now think of a backwards cartwheel with your arms. The left arm sweeps down and forward. The right arm backstrokes as you spin the right heel down, align the left heel to the arch of your right foot. Warrior two. Let's take a few breaths. So notice that I'm modifying, but for you, if you don't have an ankle injury, go ahead and turn in your right leg slightly to face the front of your mat to enable more easily the left leg to completely turn out. Aligning front knee, 
middle toe and midline of your mat. Feel the pelvis upright as you slightly engage the lower belly. Spine tall while relaxing your shoulders. Then eyes steady. Let's take two more breaths. Feeling what we're attached to. Sometimes it prevents us from being still. Like there's some fidgeting in the eyes, or fidgeting in the toes. Notice that, but smile at it. Just being able to notice. Flip the left palm to face up, lift the sideways. Then side bend towards the rear of your mat, lightly landing right hand and right leg in peaceful or exalted warrior. Bring your attention to your left knee and continue to point it down the midline of your mat. Breathe down the left side body, keeping your center contained. Inhale, lower your two hands to frame your left foot and step back to plank. You choose whole plank, cat cow, vinyasa, or none of it will meet in downward facing dog. Once there, let's take three to five breaths. Repolishing the qualities in your breath that you are practicing in body and mind. Triceps rotating towards the ground, sitting bones lifting high, fronts of your thighs firming back. Take another deep breath. And at the end of this exhale, walk or lightly jump to the front of your mat into a forward fold. Let your feet come together to touch and inhale lengthen halfway. Exhale, fold forward. Let your knees come together to touch and bend your knees, sink your weight towards your heels. Inhale to chair pose. Press through your feet and exhale to rise up. Now, Let's take the sequence into continuous flow. So as you focus on your breathing mostly and trust your body to move to your breath, modifying in any way you need, let it be a meditation through movement. So arms by your side, standing tall, breathe in and out through the nose. Listen to that whisper. Here we go. Inhale, bend your knees together, sit back in chair. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, lift the chest, lengthen halfway. Float to Chaturanga or step to plank as you exhale to lower. Your choice of vinyasa here. Inhale, cobra or upward facing down. Exhale, downward facing down. Inhale, raise the right leg. Exhale, cross the knee to left tricep. Step forward to a high lunge. Inhale, rise to crescent pose. To your right, exhale, open arm twist. To your left, back stroke the left arm to warrior two. Flip the right palm, exhale, sweep it back to peaceful warrior. Inhale, touch the earth with two hands to plank. You choose whole plank, flow, or no flow. Back to downward facing dog. From there, side two. Inhale, raise your left leg. Exhale, cross the knee to right elbow or tricep. Step forward to a high lunge. Inhale, rise to crescent pose. To your left, exhale, open arm twist. To your right, inhale, warrior two, back stroking the right arm. Flip the left palm, exhale, peaceful warrior. Touch the ground with two hands. Inhale to plank pose. Flow or no flow, go at your pace of breath. Leading in downward dog will take three to five breaths. And you allow space to feel both ends of the breath, fullness and emptiness. welcoming it fully and saying goodbye with joy 
the practice of a parigraha, non-attachment. With bent knees, look beyond your hands. At the end of your exhale, lightly land your feet together at the top. Breathe in to lengthen forward. Breathe out to fold. Knees together. Inhale, sit back towards your heels in chair pose. Exhale to rise up. All right, let's take it one more round. Keep flowing at your pace of breath. Inhale, chair. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen half. Float to Chaturanga or step to plank, exhaling into your choice of vinyasa. Keep flowing at your pace of breath. Just use my words as cues if you need them. When you arrive at Downward Dog, inhale, raise your right leg. Exhale, cross the knee to left tricep, stepping the foot to a high lunge. Inhale, rise to crescent pose. To your right, exhale, open arm twist. To your left, inhale, warrior two. Flip the right palm, exhale, peaceful warrior. Two hands to the ground, inhale to plank pose. Exhale, lower, flow or no flow. At your own pace, when you arrive at downward dog, inhale, raise the left leg. Exhale, cross the knee to right tricep. Step the foot forward to a high lunge. Inhale, rise to crescent pose. To your left, exhale, open arm twist. To your right, inhale, warrior two. Flip the left palm, exhale, peaceful warrior. Two hands to the earth, inhale to plank. Decide where you go from here and we'll meet in downward facing dog for several breaths. What do you notice in your body right now? Is there something speaking? As we've talked in our study of satya, truthfulness a few days ago, how our bodies never lie and they tell us the direct experience of what is. Yes, the mind interprets. <laughs> Can you feel the truth in your body giving you information, even in discomfort, even in pain? So from here, we're going to add a little surprise treat in single pigeon pose. If you know that you prefer to practice single pigeon on your back, go ahead and lie down, crossing right ankle over left thigh. Otherwise, pick up the right leg behind you, turn out the right thigh bone at the hip, and slide your right shin across your mat in front of your pelvis coming down to sit. Tucking the left toes behind, place your hands alongside your hips and pick up your pelvis just for a moment, scissoring the right hip back, the left hip forward. And if there's a gap between right glute and the ground, in order to keep your pelvis squared, go ahead and place something in that gap like a folded blanket. Then from here, let's stay upright. We're not gonna fold forward and let the body think we're cooling down. We're just opening the right outer hip a little bit more. So you can either stay upright, you could backstroke the left arm, bend the left knee, lean the weight onto your left thigh and not on the knee, and catch hold of the inside big toe side of ankle or foot. And as you bring that leg towards you, you might feel more of a lengthening in the front muscle of the left thigh, even the hip flexor. If you'd like a little more back bend as we've been practicing already, you could raise the right arm, helping your balance out by imagining you're scissoring the thighs towards each other. Feel a slight lift in the pelvic floor. Right arm can stay in the air, or you could hit, hook the top of your left foot in the crook of your left elbow, clasping the fingers. Whatever version of opening your right hip that you're in in single pigeon, let's take four more deep breaths. Focusing on the balance and length of those breaths.
Now, if you're on your back before switching sides, you might like to rotate your two thighs together and apart with your knees bent. Otherwise, please make your way back to downward facing dog, raising the right leg behind you, bending the knee towards the sky to open the hip, and perhaps even shaking the leg out or rotating the thigh or flipping it over if that is part of your practice going into tripod back bend. Has the breathing changed? Then preparing for side two, if you're on your back, simply cross left ankle over right thigh, flexing the left hip. Otherwise, raise the left leg, bend the knee, turn open at the left hip and cross the left shin in front of your pelvis onto your mat as you slide your right leg straight back, tucking the toes for a moment. Place your hands alongside your hips, lift the pelvis off the floor to scissor the left hip back, the right hip forward, and maybe put something under the left hip if needed. Then do stay upright if you're in the seated version of this pose. We don't want to completely rest in it right now, not yet. If you're adding a stretch for your right quadricep, bend your right knee. Let your weight rest on your right thigh, not the kneecap, as you backstroke the right arm. If you can, reach for the inside, big toe side of right ankle or foot. Helps to open the inner shoulder. And gently bring that foot closer to your body. Now you could use the left hand in front of you on the ground as support to keep the spine upright. Or think of scissoring the legs, find that support at your pelvic area, and maybe raise the left arm. Or entering what some call mermaid pose, hook the top of your right foot into the crook of your right elbow and let the fingers clasp overhead. And then again, feel into your body, taking four more steady breaths here. If you're lying in your back, again, add some movement like circling the legs with the knees bent. Otherwise, start to make your way back to that three-legged dog, now raising your left leg behind you, bending the left knee towards the sky as you open the left hip. Moving the left leg at the hip socket, or if you feel prepared to, flipping it over into tripod back bend, lifting the pelvis, and opening the chest towards the sky. Deep breaths. Let's all reconvene at Downward Facing Dogs. So if you're on your back, hug your knees to your chest and perhaps you rock your body forward and back a few times. Or you can lower the hands in front and step back. Downward Facing Dog. Bend your knees, take a deep breath, gaze past the hands. Bottom of the exhale, lightly land your feet together, almost at the top of your mat. Take at least one foot behind the front edge of your mat. Feet come together, breathe in to lengthen halfway. Breathe out to fold in. Inhale to chair pose. Now, Coming into a twist, you could stay in chair and begin to rotate your chest to the right with or without the leverage of left arm against right thigh. If you're using the leverage, you might lower your hands outside the right edge of your mat to enter an arm balance called Revolve Crow, a twisting crow. So the elbows both bend towards the left edge of the mat, keeping the arms parallel. And your gaze is a foot or more past the index fingers pointing on the ground. Right thighs resting on one or both upper arms. Whatever version of the spinal twist you're in, let's focus on three more deep breaths. Coming back through center and chair, inhale the arms overhead. Root down through your feet and exhale to rise. Close your eyes as you stand tall and mountain, perhaps placing left hand at the heart, right hand, lower belly, and just take a few slow breaths through the nose, observing. 
Where did the mind go while you held that twisted version of chair? Was there some attachment to outcome or to fear? Again, just doing this introspection in a kind way to yourself, just to become more aware of the choices that we make. Now, as you continue to listen to the breath, feel your feet touching, then bend your knees to touch, sinking your weight towards your heels, come back to chair pose and join your hands at the heart. Now remember that you're twisting at your waistline. So the knees stay in one line as you turn your chest to the left, breath by breath. Perhaps adding the leverage of right arm against left thigh. If you're moving towards your hands about a foot over to the left of your left outer foot, placing your hands to face the left wall, index fingers parallel. The elbows bend towards the right wall. Your gaze is past the left fingertips towards the left wall. Staying in the twist, left thigh crosses one or both upper arms to lean and press against, like a shelf. Let's take three more breaths. Coming back to center and chair, breathe in, raise your arms up. Breathe out, eyes up to stand. And again, sit the left hand on your heart, right hand on your lower belly. Slowing the breath down. Observe what mind or body have to say. Now I invite you to step your feet apart, wider than hips distance, parallel towards the front of your mat again. With knees bent, breathe in to raise the arms overhead as if scooping some fresh, cool water from a river. And as though you're pouring it over yourself in purification and cleanse, exhale through the mouth and fold forward. Again, inhale, scooping that fresh, pure water. Exhale, dousing in it. Take a few more on your own. Maybe even loud sigh if you like. Ha. <sighs> when you feel like you've had enough, land your pelvis on the ground and come to sit, bringing your feet together in front of you. Yep. And as your legs touch, as like they were in chair, extend your arms forward with your palms face up. So feel pressing down to your left and right sitting bones, lifting up from the base of your spine and through each vertebra, lifting the back ribs, drawing the navel towards the spine and up towards the heart, broadening your chest, relaxing the shoulders and steadying your gaze or closing your eyes. Now knees and feet hugging, tilt back just enough to lift your legs off the floor into boat Navasana. We're gonna be here for about 30 seconds. If you'd like to add the Kriya Ego Eradicator pose, the thumbs are pointed towards the sky and the other fingers are curled like this, wide apart, so you feel a stretch between thumb and index. And you might add breath of fire, breathing through the nose, quick breaths, exhales, pulse the belly towards the spine like this. Modifications include lowering your hands onto your legs to hold them up, lowering your hands on the floor, putting one foot on the floor and lifting one leg at a time. We've got 10 seconds left. Pause, take a deep breath in, hold. Think of lifting the pelvic floor, chin to chest. Then exhale through the mouth, let the thumbs come together overhead and then open the arms apart, bend the knees apart, bring the soles of your feet to the ground to touch. Baddha Konasana. So bending the knees apart, catch hold of your outer feet and lift the spine as you root down again to the pelvis. With that long spine, extend your heart forward to fold for a few slow breaths. Maybe walking the hands forward 
as you broaden your sacrum, broaden your chest. Leading with your chest, breathe in, so slowly rise up. Step your feet on the ground, hips distance parallel. Extend the arms forward with the palms face up again. And then take a few breaths to very slowly, carefully lower your back and head to the floor. Calling on your team of core muscles from neck to glutes and through all the sides of your torso to stabilize your lumbar spine. Once your head meets the ground, arms are close down by your sides. Walk your feet back until you could almost touch your heels with your fingertips, but not quite, just almost. Then press your feet into the floor to prepare for bridge. We're taking two last back bends, starting with bridge. So raise the pelvis slowly while actively lengthening the fronts of your thighs forward, keeping them parallel. Tilt your chin back slightly away from your chest, taking full breaths. Walk the upper arms closer together, perhaps the hands interlaced. More important to keep the elbows straight, not bent. Then draw the shoulders onto the earth. Engage your hamstrings and slightly your glutes by pretending as if you're dragging the heels back towards your glutes without visibly moving your feet. Spin your inner thighs slightly downward towards the mat while lengthening your tailbone forward towards the space between your knees. So total counts of breaths, five to 10, your choice. When you feel ready to come down, use an exhalation to mindfully lower one vertebra at a time. When your pelvis meets the floor, just take two or three breaths before taking your last back bend of choice. It might be bridge pose, it might be upward, upward facing bow with hands alongside your ears. I'll walk you through that if you choose that. It might be rolling onto your belly, either locust pose or bow where you catch hold of your outer feet while on your belly. Whatever you choose, support the lower back Keeping the knees no wider than hips width, parallel feet, parallel thighs. Think of coiling the chest from right under your shoulder blades. So if hands are alongside your ears and you're following me to Urdhva Dhanurasana, keep the arms parallel and start by lifting the pelvis like bridge. Keep the feet and thighs parallel, activate your hamstrings and slightly your glutes. Then bring the top of your head to the floor. And if you need, walk the hands further apart to keep the elbows from flaring apart. Pressing through your hands. Only lift the head if you feel no compression in the lower back. In any of these back, you do not want to feel any compression in the lower back. That begins to happen, slowly come out of the pose and try a softer version. The five to 10 breaths, your choice. Remember if you're an upward bow like this or bridge pose, energetically drag the feet back without actually moving them while actively stretching the tailbone forward towards the space between the knees. Expanding your lungs, broadening your heart space. When you decide to come down, take it in reverse, breath by breath. Crown of the head to the floor if you're an upward bow, then chin to chest, then slowly lower one vertebra at a time. Once your pelvis is on the ground, or maybe you're on your belly, stay there for a moment. Just take a gentle moving twist by keeping your knees bent and dropping your shins together left and right for a few breaths slowly. Helping to loosen your lower back, massage it. You might even feel a massage in your glutes if you're lying on your back. And also allowing a moment to slow down your breath if it's sped up. Hmm. Now do make your way onto your back if you're not already there. Extending your left leg straight forward on the ground, hug your right knee bent towards your chest. Preparing for a supine 
spinal twist. Open your right arm wide to the right, flat on the floor, and scoot your pelvis closer to the right edge of your mat, just a couple of inches. As you keep the right shoulder rooted, begin to cross your right thigh over your body to your left, only to the range that your right shoulder can stay grounded. <clears throat> now bring your attention to your right outer hip, Think of rolling it slightly away from your belly and towards your left foot in the effort of tractioning your lower spine and creating more space there. Let's take just about five more deep inhales into the stomach, slower exhales out through the mouth. A digestion stimulating, nervous system calming breath work. Deep belly breaths in, longer exhales through the mouth. The end of this breath, roll back to center onto your back and slide your right leg forward on the ground. Bend your left knee into your chest and open your left arm wide on the floor. Scoot your pelvis a little closer to the left side of your mat, just a few inches. Then begin to cross your left leg over your body, finding the range of your spinal twist on the side that allows your left shoulder to stay on the ground. And bring your attention to your left outer hip. Think of rolling it slightly forward so that's away from your belly, away from your torso, and towards your right foot. Breathe in to your abdomen. Breathe out slower to your lips. Four more deep breaths. this breath, roll onto your back and find a restful way of lifting your legs up higher than your heart. You could simply bend the knees into your chest, maybe circle them around to massage your back or widen the knees outside of your shoulders and catch your outer ankles, turning the soles of your feet to face the sky and happy baby. If the latter, root your tailbone to the earth to continue lengthening your lower back. Maybe you straddle the legs apart and clasp the big toes, or lift the legs up, perhaps a shoulder stand if you normally practice that and know how to do it safely. Give yourself about five more breaths in that cooling inversion you've chosen. And after that, gently lower your body into a position of rest for a few minutes in Shavasana. Once there, close your eyes. We'll finish off before just counting the in-breath for five counts and the out-breath for seven counts. In through the nose, out through the lips. As the body is still, the eyes are closed, empty this breath. Then slowly inhale for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, five, four, 
three, two, one. Exhale, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let it go. Allow your breath to just flow. We'll be here for a few minutes. Honoring your time, this will be a short Shavasana, unless you do have the time to stay longer for two, maybe five more minutes, staying where you are. But before ending the practice completely, if you choose to sit up for meditation for two minutes, and begin with small movements and ease your body upright to sit. If you're sitting for meditation, you might continue to close your eyes or just half close, gazing softly downward in front of you. Let your breath continue to flow freely. Feel how your body supports a feeling of alertness in mind. Through your practice today, what truths has your body revealed, specifically in areas we might hold, carry tension, grasp, in light of a parigraha, non-attachment. Feel into that as we sit.
Allow a deeper breath in to lift the space around your heart. Feel the release of the exhalation as you take deeper breaths. If you're going to close the back with us, find a seat if you're not already in it. With a spine tall, join your palms to meet at your heart. Bowing in. Appreciation for the insights, the effort, the knowledge that our practice brings so that we can unveil the best truths of ourselves more and more. Let's close with one ohm. Take a deep breath. Delight in me bows to the light in you. Namaste.